Hi everybody and welcome again to Mike's Hidden Histories. I'm here today in Rathcormac in the northwest of Ireland uh, in the county of Sligo to tell you about a famous woman uh, from this, this part uh, who was reared here uh, in Lissadale House, reared to great privilege uh, and wealth and her name was Constant Gore Boots uh, but more famously known by her married name as Countess Markovich and this is a statue commemorating Counts, Countess Markovich here in Rath Cormac. Now, her father, Sir Henry Gore Booth, and her mother, Georgina, uh, reared her, uh, uh, and her equally famous sister, I suppose, Eva Gore Booth, uh, who I'll tell you about later, uh, in great privilege. Now, perhaps uh, the seeds of her future revolutionary or socialist outlook came from uh, her father, even though he was extremely wealthy, and that was Sir Henry Gore Booth, uh, who was, uh, and his wife, uh, Constance, mother, Georgina. And uh, during, give an example that during the famine, local famine here in 1879, 1880, the family distributed food, uh, coal, heating, turf, and so on, uh, to all his tenants and to all the poor far and wide. So. The family are renowned for that. So uh, this uh, care of the poor or campaigning on behalf of the poor is a theme that is throughout uh, Constance's life. Now, she always wanted to feel, uh, to live for something, as she says herself, and to die for something. Anyway, in 1893, she set off for London where she was studying art, her first love. And she was there and stayed there till 1900. But there, she joined the suffragette movement also and uh, was very active in London and that's where she perhaps learned her trade about rights for women. She moved then to Paris to continue her studies in 1900 and it was there that she met a Polish count, a Casimir Markovich, and she married him and hence the name uh, Countess Markovich or Countess Constant Markovich. Now she returned to Ireland in 1902 with her husband and uh, she uh, joined the Daughters of Erin, which was a women's rights group. She also set up a FINA Erin, which was uh, a group uh, of young people, uh, also uh, highlighting and training them about equal rights and a, a, perhaps a socialist outlook as well, uh, where all people are equal. Now, in 1908, but herself and Eva Gore Booth, her sister, are over in Manchester, and there they're campaigning against the future British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, who was standing for election. And they campaigned against him and for a candidate that was in favour of the suffragettes. And uh, as a result of her efforts and perhaps many others, uh, Winston Churchill did not win a seat in that election. Now, back in Dublin in the same year, she joins an Irish revolutionary group, Sinn Féin, which was a nationalist group set up seeking independence from Ireland, from the rule of Britain. Um, and uh, at the same time, she campaigned as well for the extension of the, provision of the provisions of the School Meals Act uh, to Ireland. In 1913, there was a big strike in Dublin where workers were locked out for five months without pay by employers. A very, very difficult time. She worked, uh, uh, they bought food, distributed food and fuel to the poor of, uh, uh, of Dublin and the families of those workers who now had no income. At that time also, she joined the Irish Citizens' Armies and became a treasurer of that organisation. This had been set up by James Connolly, a Scottish man who was now also an Irish nationalist. And that national, nationalism became her passion. So we find her in 1916 during the rebellion of 1916 by, uh, by the uh, Irish nationalists um, here in Ireland. Uh, she's in Stephen's Green in Dublin fighting military, fighting with, with guns against the British troops. She was arrested uh, as one of the leaders and she was condemned to death, but that was subsequently commuted and she was released. In 1917, just out of jail, she's now campaigning and demonstrating against the uh, recruitment and conscription of Irish people into the British Army 
during the First World War. It didn't apply uh, eventually because of ca the campaign and the, uh, of people like herself. She ended up in jail. But while in jail, in fact, uh, she's now elected the first ever Member of Parliament in Britain. And the, an act had been passed in Britain which provided for women uh, having the vote for the first time ever, women over 30, and also uh, that they become members of Parliament. So she holds the distinction of being the first female member of uh, Parliament in the House of Commons. Uh, she didn't take her seat, she was an abstentionist MP. And the following year, she was elected as a Chocadola in the revolutionaries, uh, Sinn Féin revolutionaries, uh, set up their own parliament in Dublin, and she became Minister for Labour in that parliament. She was a TD, a Chocadola, an MP it's called, um, uh, in English, and uh, she was one of only two of the first female ministers in Europe. Now, she stayed there uh, as a, in that capacity until 1922. And after the Free State, the Irish Free State was established, she was elected to the new Irish Parliament. But she did not, with others, did not take her seat because she uh, was against the, uh, um, the uh, Free State, the concept of the Free State, rather than a full Irish Republic. But in 1927, after a new party was formed, she joined that party with Eamon de Valera and she did enter the Dáil then in 1927 as a member of that uh, parliament. But her, her life was shortened. She had acute appendicitis and two, oper two operations and she uh, began to, to go downhill and died. And she knew she was dying after, after the op operations and she insisted to be moved into a ward where the poor... The poorest of the poor uh, were, were uh, housed, and there she died amongst the poor of Dublin. Her subsequent funeral in that year was one of the biggest ever. 300,000 people came out to uh, pay their last respects to Countess Markovic. She was a famous woman, privileged background, a revolutionary, a woman of principles, um, and was at that time was famous not just in Ireland, but in Britain and across Europe. Uh, but not just because of her background, but because of her achievements. So there's the story of Countess Markovic. She had a sister called Eva Gore Booth, who was another suffragist, held the first suffragist meeting here in Sligo. Uh, and uh, she it was an accomplished artist. And back in her place in Lissadale House here in, uh, in Sligo, many of her paintings are on display. So there's the story of a famous family, uh, famous revolutionaries, from that family, particularly Const, uh, Constance Markovic, Countess Constance Markovic. That's all from Mike's Hidden Histories. More next time.